Hey y'all, so I just recently finished watching Dave Chappelle's new Netflix series, Sticks and Stones, and he talked about everything. I literally mean everything. He talked about R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, council culture, molestation, Kevin Hart, the Me Too movement, abortion, mass shootings, Jussie Smollett, and he talked about the opioid crisis. Now, there were moments where I literally sat there with my hand over my mouth in shock, like, oh my God, did he really just say that? There were moments where I sat there with a completely straight face. There were moments where I rolled my eyes and there were moments where I freaking laughed my butt off hysterically, okay? Were there moments that were completely uncomfortable, provocative, controversial? Absolutely. But I was under the assumption that comedy was supposed to be those things, that comedy was supposed to bring us all together to laugh at sometimes awkward, painful truths, or sometimes just concepts. But as usual, leave it to mainstream media to basically be like, I didn't like that. And here are 10 reasons why you shouldn't either. So anyway, let's take a look at <laughs> what the mainstream media has been saying about Dave Chappelle's um, stand-up and their reaction to it. First with Vice News, that's supposed to be totally, totally anti-establishment and anti what you talking about. We want to take a different spin on this, but we all know they're not. <laughs> you can definitely skip Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special, Sticks and Stones. The comedian doubles down on misogyny and transphobia in both the special and the hidden bonus scenes that follows. <laughs> then they even go on to talk about how this impersonation that he made uh, of this Chinese person was totally racist and totally the type of racism that we don't need and not even realizing, okay, how ironic that they literally make Dave Chappelle's points for him, okay? First of all, he talks about how uh, the LGBT community is a protected class and it's totally okay to make disparaging remarks and use certain words when it comes to the black community, but the LGBT community, um, now that's crossing a line. That's a little too far. Not only that, no mention of the impersonation that he does of the Nigerian men that attack Jussie Smollett. Because, I mean, well, uh, maybe not as racist as doing an impersonation of a Chinese person, right? And then here we have nationalreview.com. Dave Chappelle shouldn't defend Michael Jackson, okay? Because, well, certain topics are just off limit. It just it's just a little too far. And then we have slate.com, Dave Chappelle sticks and stones, fights for the rights of the already powerful. Cause I mean, now they basically admit, they basically tell you outright, hey, we don't want to sit there and hear your experiences for an hour and what you go through. We want you to take on the brunt of our issues and talk about us and virtue signal for an hour because that's what we want to hear. And then <laughs> you have pacemagazine.com. Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special reminds us that the most successful comedians are also the most sensitive. And let me just show you guys. Let me just show you how hypocritical these people can be. <laughs> just, just follow me.
Somehow he's incapable of understanding the difference between criticism and censorship. Although he's not as confrontational or direct about it as Gervais, Chappelle still seems to believe that Santa Cummings jokes aren't funny is somehow the same as squashing that Cummings career. This is in a special he's being paid eight figures for and that's getting the full promotional push of the biggest outlet in the world today. He makes an offhand joke about Louis C.K. dying in a masturbation accident and acting like his friend's career is over, despite fellow millionaire C.K. regularly getting booted in clubs within months of that scandal breaking. I don't know how the richest and most successful comedians became the most entitled people alive, but it's not a good look. It's the kind of hypocrisy that you would hope a comedian like Chappelle would call out and rip apart, but instead it's become a defining part of his brand. <laughs> now, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong, okay? But this is just a hunch, you know? But I have this awkward feeling that the author that wrote this article uh, is probably very similar, or the type of person that would completely take out their cape for somebody like LeBron James when Laura Ingram says, shut up and dribble. <laughs> but here you find them basically saying, Shut up and just tell jokes, and mostly the ones that I like, okay? You're a millionaire. Why are you complaining? I don't want to hear what the heck you have to say about such things. Your opinion doesn't matter. You're rich. You're too rich to have an opinion, even as a black man. <laughs> now, that's hypocritical. But literally, you have most of these articles coming right out and meeting that social engineering is real. I mean, for better lack of words, you have these authors admitting that Dave Chappelle has not changed. His jokes, his material has not changed. But there are people desperately trying to move the culture to their standard of what's funny. Things that were totally fine, okay, totally fine and okay just years ago are totally, totally not okay now. There were even, there was even an author that referred to Dave Chappelle as the old uncle that's very awkward and widely inappropriate and says things that he shouldn't be saying at the family events. And you basically have those young progressive family members that would just like to, I mean, basically forcibly grab him by the ear and pull him into uncharted terrains of unicorns and progressiveness where everybody thinks, talks, and laughs the same. And that's why this comedy special is practically perfect because comedy is art. And Nina Simone was the one that said it's an artist's duty to reflect the times. And whether we want to admit it or not, this is exactly where our culture is. These are concepts and topics that we are talking about around the kitchen table. Maybe not as provocatively, but we're certainly talking about it. And while there is this new culture of outrage and council culture, there is also a counterculture of defiance and anti-censorship. And Dave relates this perfectly in this series no matter what the media tries to make us believe. And so those are my thoughts. Leave your thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.